Hi, Will. Hey, Karen. So today we are actually going to talk about citizen science. This whole course is about citizen science. So um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about what citizen science is. That's a big question. What is citizen science? So yes, exactly. It can have a very big answer or it can have a very simple answer. So I'm going to give a simple answer to start off with. So citizen science is just about everyone getting involved and helping collect scientific data. That's what it is in a very simple way. So would it be right if I said a lot of time people think that research is done by scientists and scientists work in isolation. You know, they in a lab do their coat. own thing. Yeah, in, in the lab coat. with the, the, the bubbling um, chemicals all around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've yeah, met yeah. and you've right, met so. a lot of scientists and if I think scientists, that's still what comes up in my mind. So citizen science is more a way for science to get engaged with society, with citizens, and to get the people of a country or of a society, to get them actively involved in the science and in the research. So yeah. in a sense, everyday people, they don't have to be professional scientists, but they can become scientists and in so doing, they become called citizen scientists. That's right. And it's as not in the lab with those dangerous bubbling chemicals, but it's really a lot of the time it's to help them collect data. So when a scientist starts out on a project, they need to gather information about what they want to learn and they need to gather lots and lots of information. And that's where almost anyone can help scientists out at that stage of the project. So Karen, you yourself, uh, surely you've been involved in some citizen science projects. Is there any that you'd like to tell me about? I have. I've been involved with citizen scientists, science projects as a citizen scientist, just helping out scientists. But I was also very lucky to be involved with one project where I was helping to organize it and actually helping to recruit citizen scientists. And I made a little video about it and I'd love to share it with you. Sounds good. Let's give it a watch. Great. Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about citizen science. There are some great citizen science projects out there to get involved with. You can help scientists gather information or data on bumblebees, plants, birds, and so many other things. But I'd like to share with you a citizen science project that I was involved with a few years ago. The project was the Cork City Otter Project, run by Cork Nature Network. And as you can see by their logo, they're very fond of otters. The aim of the project was to record where otters were in and around Cork City. Now, you might be asking, what? There are otters in Cork City? You might even be asking, what is an otter? And that's OK. Not many people have seen an otter, and lots of people don't know that they can be found in and around Cork City. So let's start off with what is an otter? This is an otter. It's a mammal with long whiskers, short ears, a long thick tail, webbed feet, and is covered in thick fur. Otters live near rivers and streams where they hunt fish, crayfish, and even water birds. Some otters live by the coast and hunt in the ocean, but these are not sea otters. This is a sea otter, and we don't actually have them in Ireland. Our otters hunt and swim in the sea, but they have to be near fresh water to wash, or else their fur gets all matted up with salt, and it won't be waterproof anymore, meaning they get cold and wet. Otters are pretty common in Ireland. This is a map from the National Biodiversity Data Centre. The data centre collects and stores data on plant, animal and other species in Ireland. Each one of these squares represents an area of 10 kilometers squared and shows where otters have been spotted and recorded. Yellow squares show where one otter was recorded. And as the squares get redder, the more otters were recorded within that 10 kilometers. You can see the squares cover pretty much the whole of Ireland. It's only in a few squares like these where we don't have any records. 
So we know otters can be found on most rivers in Ireland, but what Cork Nature Network wanted to know was how otters use the smaller streams in and around Cork City, especially as there's going to be a lot of flood relief work done on the rivers in and around the city, which might affect otters. So finding out where the otters are is really important. The river we chose to study was the River Bride, which flows through Blackpool before joining the Lee in Cork City. So how do we look for otters? Well, one reason why so many people have not seen an otter is because they mainly come out at night or very early in the morning. Some will come out during the day, but especially if there's lots of people about, like in a city, otters will mainly hunt and move about at night or early in the morning. That makes them pretty difficult to spot, and it's certainly not as safe to be walking along a river at night. Otters also have great hearing and smell, and they will probably spot us and hide long before we spot them. So we actually don't look for the otters themselves, but rather signs the otters have been in the area. The main way you look for an otter, or to survey for otters, is by having a person walk along a river and look for otter poo. Yep, that's right, otter poo. Or we can use the fancier name, which is sprint. Luckily, otters mark their territory. This is known as sprinting, and this is what these otters are doing. They leave a bit of sprint along banks on rocks, stones, or tufts of grass, and this tells other otters that they're in the area. Otters are very territorial, and especially male otters can get into serious fights with each other. So letting other otters know that you're in the area might keep you apart and prevent any fights. So we have a way of looking for otters, but next we needed people to help out. And this is the power of citizen science. We could never do the project by ourselves and collect enough data, and we would never be able to afford to pay people to help us out. So we reached out to the people of Cork to help us look for otters. We advertised on Facebook and Twitter and asked anyone who was interested in our otter survey to get in contact. We invited those people to a training day where we taught them all about otters and how to find them like a little bit of what I've taught you today. Then we took them down to the river to show them some otter sprint in real life. Once we had our citizen scientists, they were organized into teams and on each team was an otter expert to help them out. It was very important to have teams so no one ever worked alone, which is especially dangerous when working in or near rivers and other bodies of water. Each team was assigned a part of the river, which they had to survey by walking along and looking for signs of otters. The equipment they had to bring along included Wellingtons and wet gear, a notebook and pencil, and always a pencil when you're recording outdoors, because pen ink will run if it gets wet, like if you drop your notebook into a river. They also needed a phone that they could take photos with, and one that they were able to get a GPS location with. The citizen scientists were asked to follow this protocol. Walk along a river bank till you spot signs of an otter. This was mainly sprint, but there might be other signs like paw prints. Take a photograph of the sprint or print, note down the exact GPS location and the date, and then send the data on to us. From the data that the citizen science collected, we were able to get a good idea of where the otters were. And we found that there were lots of otter activity on the River Bride. And that data can be used to show engineers where the otters are and help reduce the disturbance to them during the flood works. But the project was not just about gathering data on otters. It was also about educating people about otters. Lots of the volunteers never knew that there were otter in Cork City. But after taking part in the project, they knew all about Cork's otters. And 
you can bet they told their family and friends so that even more people learnt about our otters. The project also showed them how full of life our rivers and streams can be, even in the middle of the city, and how important it is to look after them and make sure that they're healthy. And the volunteers had fun doing it. I know for me, it was a great experience. Tracking otter in a river, I could almost imagine myself as an intrepid explorer in some wild place on the search for some mysterious creature. And it didn't matter that I was just in Blackpool with cars passing close by. I really felt surrounded by wilderness and connected to nature. I also met some great people who were interested in learning about nature like me. I never got to see an otter, but I know how to find out if they're in the river. And now I will never be able to walk along a river without stopping and looking for otter poop. That was cool. It was a lovely project to be involved with. One thing you didn't mention in the video is um, the smell of the spray. I, <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> it was in my first version, but then I thought maybe, maybe that's just too, um, maybe that would put people off a little bit because when you try and tell them, but yeah, exactly. So the best way to identify otter spray is to smell it to get down on your hands and knees and have a good old sniff. And what's it like? I've heard other people describe it like jasmine. Now, I don't get the smell of jasmine, but it's not, it's not a horrible smell at all. It's a, a slightly musty, very, very slightly fishy smell. It smells a bit like a river, you know, a river that has things living in it. And the only thing is that mink, which is an introduced species to Ireland, they mark along rivers too. So you might smell a mink um, sprint as well. And that apparently smells like burnt rubber. It is apparently smells absolutely horrible. So you just have to be a little bit careful. Otter poo, lovely. Mink poo, not so good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I recall getting a bit confused there recently in Baltimore on an island. I found some poo like that. I think it's still otter though, but couldn't be so sure. But you know, you you said you never saw one. Um, did you get to see one since? I think so. Far out, uh, it was actually on the coast, so it was one of the the coastal otters, and someone pointed it out to me, and all I saw was a little head bobbing by. But I'm going to take it that that was an otter. So yes, I finally actually seen an otter. What about yourself? Have you sure. seen them? Yeah. Uh, I did, but like I, I, the first time I saw one was, um, about let me see, it was about seven years, eight, nine years ago, on a river. I was canoeing down a river and just saw one kind of pop up like that through the water and swim along. That was the first time oh, I actually God. saw one, but I had seen the signs, and uh, like about ten years prior to that, I had been. Uh, kayaking on another river when I was in college and we found a fish and it was like three quarters eaten and it was clearly that was an otter someone was pointing it out um but then what I remember I've seen them a few a, a couple of different times I've seen one in Cork City uh they're down by Port of Cork building there on the Keys there was a guy that was in college with me actually and he used to be into wildlife videography you know any chance he got he'd go trying to capture footage of things and he used to see them down there all the time but my favorite one was near passage uh, along the walkway there i was down there to look at something to do with work birds or something or other um it was through the bird trail the south and east cork bird trail something about the signage we were checking out and afterwards, it was a lovely evening, sun going down across Cork Harbour, cold winter's evening. And I said, I oh, might as well make the most of being out here now before going home and I'll go for a walk. And I stopped off in this little pool and it's called the Sandies. The pool is like, and there was these little ripples all through the water. And I was just stopped there looking and just 10, 20 feet away from me was an otter in there fishing in the pool because as whatever way the water was going out, there was fish in the bottom. And I was able to watch them there for like 10 minutes or more. 
And what was interesting about that too was that there was all these people walking by me and no one taking any notice. And a few times I went, hey, this is cool, you know, check this out. But people probably thought I was a strange um, wanting to interact with them. But that time was cool. I could have said that they, the light eventually faded, but I was watching an otter hunt. And that was my favorite one that stands out. That's magical. Oh, there's, it's actually funny, I know, and I saw them another time at Inch Beach, and there was cubs with them. Oh. So it's like, I, I'd never seen them in my life, but then when I saw the first one, I've had four or five sightings since. So, I don't know. I Maybe think, you just got to see your first one, and then you'll see those. Yeah, you, you get your eye in, and then you know what to look for. But I think that happens a lot in Cork City as well. Um, when they do pop up during the day, they can be on the bridges there, Patrick's Bridge, you know, right in the middle of the city, munching on a fish, and you'll just have all these people walking up and down the bridge. And if they only just looked over, they would spot an otter. I think that's happened loads and loads of times. Um, but the, I told Amy, the video was, it was great to see all those people in the shots. You got, you seem to have got a great involvement. Um, was there quite good you, when you did that recruitment looking for people, did you get a positive response? A lot of positive response. A lot of people wanted to help out. Um, so a lot of people came to our first meeting. People then had to sort of drop off, which is what happens with any project once they realized, you know, oh, you have to go walking early in the morning. I can't do it on this morning. I can't do it on that morning. But, you know, we got enough people and enough dedicated people who came out on those you know, quite cold early mornings to, to walk in a cold river. We were really grateful to them because we couldn't have done it without them. That's great. And um, I mean, I've, I, I saw a video, an old video that I took a long time ago when I had seen a seal um, fishing underneath a bridge in, in the Shannon, um, which which is on the way to Bandon. People will probably know in a Shannon, but again, it was evening time, like what I described in Passage. This big seal fishing, and you could see salmon in there as well. It was really cool. But uh, I saw one comment the person had put on the video years later. I don't know who the person was. It could be the person from some other part of the world. They were like, that's not a seal. It's a sea otter. And I like, that's a, that's I know an odd one. Seal. But when in your video, it was really interesting how you brought that up about how we don't have sea otters in, in Ireland, that ours are different than the sea otter. So I was happy when I saw you point that out, Karen. Yeah, I just had someone who I thought knew a lot about nature. Well, they do know a lot about nature, but they said, oh, I saw a sea otter the other day. And I was like, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be rude, but no, you didn't. Not if you were still in Ireland. So it's, yeah, it's just something I want to point out. Sea otters are so cute and they're in loads of documentaries. So I think, you know, people see a sea otter and they think, yeah, if I see an otter in the sea, that's a sea otter. I just wanted to point it out so that everyone knows the difference. But it was as a result of getting involved in the citizen science project, it was one of those quirky little facts that you've got to learn. Yeah, exactly, exactly learn how to what otter poop smells like that there's loads of different species of otter in the world i, I had no idea how many um what else fascinating things i learned just so many little things and then it's not just the otters themselves when we're walking up the river you're you're normally walking with someone who knows a lot about nature and you know they're pointing out this is this kind of plant or did you see that fish that's that kind of fish so, you know, it wasn't just otters, it was, you just learn so much when you're surrounded by people who love nature and they love sharing nature with you then. Great. So it was a really strong social element to that citizen science project. I mean, we mentioned earlier how scientists were joking, I know, these people off working on their own. But that was very much a, a, a very sociable project for you to have been involved in as a participant as a citizen scientist. Yeah, as I mentioned, I met some some great people and then, you know, people like professors who study otters for their job to people, uh, I think one of the people who came out was an accountant, didn't really know anything about nature, 
it was just that range of people, but we were all there to learn and we were all there to, to help out. And that really bonds you together then with a group of people like that. That's lovely. And um, do you know, was the, was the research that you gathered, was this put to some good use? This particular research wasn't. I was involved in another auto project just before it, where we were actually looking around University College Cork and the otters around there. And that did, that used citizen scientists as well on a much smaller scale, but that got published in a scientific journal. We tried to publish this data, but I think we'll need to rewrite the paper. But yeah, that data was definitely taken and um, a, a paper written about it. And the other thing it was, was that we can, we actually did present it to the engineers, um, to the OPW, to say, this is where the court, this is where the otters are, because surveys have been done on those rivers, but it was back in the, you know, the 1990s, you know, we really needed updated data that we could show the engineers. So it was very important. Well, that is it getting, I mean, that's for both projects, was it, that it was presented, the OPW? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure, that's great. And I mean, when I asked that question, well, did any good come of it? Really, I think you can't answer that properly ever because the beauty of this, the work that you guys done in that other project is you've, got it, you've gathered data that could become useful at any stage. It could be beneficial next month or it might be next decade that this becomes important. And I mean, another cool thing that you did was you said there was 1990s information, but a couple of decades on, you've gathered more such information and another 10 years time, the survey might be repeated again. And we start to build up a very important picture of the river then over time. So yeah. I think um, you're probably being hard on yourselves there saying it didn't come to much use yet. I could that, see it's that's, important that's, for a number of reasons. Yeah, that's the science. That's the scientist in me. It's like, oh, it's got to be published for it to be, you know, you've got to publish, publish, publish or die. But as you said, the benefit is not from publishing. It's it might not even be the data might never be used but it's just as good as that we we educated people i think we really got the message out about otters in cork city because as i said in the video the people who came they absolutely come on they absolutely told their family and their friends about what they were doing on a saturday morning walking up a river so we could never actually measure how far the message got out or how many people we actually educated about artists we'll never know that but i have a good feeling that we we reached a lot of people that's brilliant and i mean the, the last thing i would say with that project that i thought was great is it seemed it was very easy for people to be able to get involved i know it look you might have to go early in the morning or whatever else but that's that's the, that could be the case with anything you might get involved in, a new yeah. sport, uh, whatever. But in terms of the skills that people needed, you know, that it was quite an easy thing to be able to learn what was required and do it if you were up for it. Yeah. And if you exactly. were able. Yeah. yeah, it was a good one like that. Um, there was a short training course and then you were, you were ready to go out and look for otters. And I think anyone who did that course probably still knows how to go out and look for otters. So it sounds like it's going to, the experience is going to stick with you always, Karen. Yep. As I said, there's no way I can walk past a river. I am always looking at rocks and tufts of grass and, Brilliant. Well, and leading down and sniffing it as well. If there's no one around. <laughs> well, I kind of nearly feel myself that I'm kind of, I'm after becoming involved with that project now too. And when I go by rivers or fly sailing with otters, I'll be thinking about that project, actually, because it's, it's going to stick with me. I thought it was a very enjoyable video. Thanks for sharing it with me. And it was really, for me anyway, I think that was a wonderful way to, sh to share a story about what a citizen science project is and gives me a good understanding of what a citizen scientist is. And I hope it does the same for anyone who's watching. Great. Thank you, Will.